Greetings YouTube, time for another bargain video. We have a bunch of gaming books this time around. We have Arabian Nights and Authentic Thaumaturgy, both from Steve Jackson Games. Um, I picked up these two uh, at a flea market for five bucks, yeah. Then we have some Pathfinder books. Pathfinder Andorian uh, Birth of Freedom, Birthplace of Freedom, The Dragon Empire's Primer, Heroes of the Wall, and Reign of Winter, Frozen Stars. I picked this up for a good price. I haven't bought any Pathfinder books in a bit, so I thought, I thought I'd give them a try. Uh, then we have Scared, How to Draw Fantastic Horror Comic Characters, which has some wonderful illustrations in it of, in a number of different styles, um, which I plan on you know, doing a video about that, using them as inspiration for gaming ideas. Um, and also learning how to draw monsters. We have a The Fiddler's Fake Book, which is what opened the video with. Um, and this is a musical book all about how to fake, essentially fake songs that are famous and things like that. My mother-in-law teaches uh, violin and fiddle. Then we have Drawing the Map of Life Inside the Human Genome Project. And this is an apparently an uncorrected proof, not for resale. <laughs> Joke's on them. Um, then we have Mask and Anonymous, a film with Jeff Bridges, Penelope Cruz, Bob Dylan, John Goodman, Jessica Lange, and Luke Wilson. I'd never heard of it. I came upon it in a thrift shop, so I was kind of like, sounds cool. Then we have The Assassin, which is a um, special edition. It's a Hong Kong science fiction, I mean, a Hong Kong action martial arts film. And it's got a commentary track with one of the martial artists, special effects specs guys, so I thought it'd be interesting. And we have Rudolph the Island of Misfit Toys, which came out in 2001. I've never seen this. I didn't even know it existed. Um, then we have Superman. This is the complete series of Max Fleischer cartoons. If you've never seen these, see them. I have a few of them already on DVD. I'll be getting rid of that D&D DVD, D, D, that DVD and keeping this one. Also, that's a great cover. And then we have the Kentucky Fried Movie, which is completely not safe for work in every conceivable way. Um, and the commentary track is quite entertaining. I just watched that the other day. Um... And I need to change the battery on my camera. On to section two. And here we have a collection of uh, more random objects. For example, we have Castle Rocks, which is interesting because this is from China and there's a very Western figure on the cover, but it's being played with by two Chinese kids. And the some of the text on the box itself is in Chinese. And it is, in fact, wooden blocks. And the tray it comes in is wood. I paid all of 50 cents for this at a yard sale. I plan on giving it to my therapist because he deals both with children and with parents who have kids who come to the session. So this will help them pass the time and potentially tell stories. And sometimes telling stories is how a kid comes to grips with uh, with problems. Um, we have a railroad spike. I paid a buck for this. I have two of these now. So hopefully at some point in the future, I'm going to be getting myself a forge now that I have an anvil and maybe work on some on blades. It's kind of my dream. Here we have a very large iron ring. I don't know what it was originally for. I don't know if this is where here. This is a, a weld spot, but this could be where. I'm not positive, but it's it's fairly heavy. And what I'm going to do with it, I mean, the obvious thing is strap a, a line to a, a rope to it and just use it as a, as a ranged meteor hammer kind of thing. But I might find something else to do, interesting to do with it. Here we have some chain, which is pretty nice stuff. I picked this up at the same place I got those last two items. Sorry. Um, and I plan to use this in a, uh, a uh, post-apocalyptic weapon build. I've been looking for a decent piece of chain. This could be a slightly heavier than I need, but I think it's going to come out interesting. Um, now I'm looking for my for a full-sized baseball bat, wooden, for the project. I have one of those already, but I have that slated for something else, and so I have to find another one. Um, here we have an entire half or well, half a full tin full of Christmas bulbs, balls rather. These are for my wife. She has a tree outside she planted specifically, so we have a Christmas tree that will grow forever. And it's getting to the point where probably next year we'll be able to, or next Christmas coming up in 2016, we'll be able to put, actually put larger decorations on it. And I paid two bucks for this entire tin, so that's not bad. Then we have three strings of LED bulbs. Uh, it's 120 bulbs, each one is 30 feet long, and I paid 10 bucks for three strings. Somebody was moving. I'm like, I'll take advantage of the fact that you're moving. Um, so we can use these on the tree, but we're going to have to 
get an outdoor plug. We don't have an outdoor plug at the moment to run to it. We also have a couple of other things for minor electrical stuff that I may get done at the same time. Um, then I have a, a Columbia Titanium Top, which is a, a poly wool mix. It would probably make a decent mid-layer level for me. Um, I've also been trying to get more wool things into my, uh, as opposed to pure um, artificial. I'm trying to move in that direction. I, I would probably wear a cotton layer under this. I don't particularly like wool against my skin. Um, then we have this mallet. This mallet's going down with my new workbench. And in fact, most of all the tools you're looking at here are going to end up in the basement with my workbench. Um, these are a couple of saw blades I picked up. They're brand new. The person never never cut anything with them. Um, so I'm like, okay, I'll take those saw blades. Um, I just have some nice selection of here. Uh, square, uh, round, triangular, another round, another triangular, another round, another rat tail, some rat tail, and a very large uh, triangular shaped. I've never seen a triangular file quite this big and I like the handle both in its shape and its patina. Then we have a one and a half inch wide a chisel which needs some needs some love but I can do that uh, which I'm going to uh, again put down my base in case I need to work down there with it and this awl which I'm gonna have to bring the point up to a little a little more a little sharper and again I have a grinder and it's gonna go downstairs in my workbench as opposed to the toolbox here in my office. Uh, and then we have a dagger blade I picked up, but in a state sale. And I mean, the obvious thing I can do with this is to either make a dagger or a spear, but that's boring. So I gotta think of something else to do with this. I don't know what. Anybody got any ideas? Tell me. Um, now we have a flashlight, which is a keychain laser slash LED. My father gave that to me for nothing. There'll probably be a review coming in the near future. Then we have a defiant Armor Max. This is the two double A model. I've purchased quite a few double A recently, and I'm wanting to look at them and kind of comparing them as how do they compare to other double A flashlights? And the Defiance, I've had good luck with them in the past, so we're going to see how this comes out. I haven't even opened the package yet because I was kind of saving it for this video. And we should have one more section, mostly I think tools and such. Okay, it's not just tools. We'll start out with this box, which is roughly shaped like an ammo box. It's got that same style of clasp. It has a top section and a large interior section. I bought this for five bucks at a pawn shop and I bought it for some knife storage. So I'm just gonna fill this thing up with the slightly oversized knives I've got that are smaller than machetes, but larger than like my storage I have for smaller knives. And I may even put a few small knives in the, in the, in the top section. Um, because I've got the space, why not? And for five bucks, it's cheap storage. And then I can just push it out of the way and put it and throw it in the bottom of a closet or something. Um, here we have, it is a, an incomplete body hammer, body work hammer set for doing, you know, body work on cars. But for 10 bucks, for this amount of number of tools, I figured I couldn't go wrong. And I've not, I've never done body work. But we both own, well, we own cars and my mother-in-law owns a car. So there's that possibility in the future for $10, I'm willing to buy into that. Just put it in the corner of the basement and not worry about it until I need it. Um, or somebody I know wants to borrow it. It's fine with me. For $10, bucks, um, I think it's a pretty good buy-in. And the guy I bought it from was a, was a nice fellow. Um, we have a Klein Tools duct knife. Not duck. It's not for stabbing ducks. It's for working on ducks. Um, ducts. And uh, I didn't know they made them. I was un completely unaware that Klein Tools made knives at all um, until I saw this. And I got it for 12 bucks at a, at a pawn shop. Um, it's new. Um, apparently they got a lot of them from somewhere. Maybe company, some store went on a business or something. Um, so I'm expecting a, a review of that in the near future. Here we have a stack of 10 saw blades. And my wife was so thrilled when she saw me grabbing saw blades and putting them into a pile so I could take them out of an estate sale. Uh, but I use them for weapon builds, and I even I, I already have some ideas for another weapon build that will be using um, one of these smaller blades. So I brought it home, and almost immediately I found a use for them, at least one of them. Um, so yeah, never have too many saw blades, man. They're always useful. And if I really want to, I can use them to cut wood, because um, they're, they're, a couple of them are, are, are in decent shape. Um, here we have a... Uh, uh, Jorgensen Easy Hold 2 bar clamp and spreader clamp. And um, you, know, you can never have too many clamps, man. And I picked this up for a song. I mean, I think I paid a dollar for it or something like that at a yard sale. So I'm like, 
Alrighty. Um, then we have this. This is a broken tool handle, um, but it's steel. And I'm going to turn it into a weapon. I'm going to round off this so that this you do, so it's nice in one nice continu contiguous curve. Um, and then I'm probably going to grind some kind of a bevel on one side. This is too thick to get an e a real edge, not to mention I have no idea what the steel is. I'd have to take it from all the way from the spine, and I, I don't know if I'm that talented at this point. But if I can just put, like, even if it's a, even if it's a 45 degree, you know, so you have a 90 degree edge on that, and just at, at a uh, 45 degree angle, that would still be a lot of force concentration. So you'd really be imparting a lot of energy into a target. Um, here's something I've never owned. It's a Slim Jim. <laughs> I don't know how to use one, but again, I paid for a buck for it at, at a yard sale. Guy had a bunch of car stuff. You should have seen the size of the vice he had there. It was astounding. I didn't need it, but it was astounding. And you can hear my dryer in the background. Sorry about that. Um, and we have a double-ended crescent wrench made in USA. Um, I've never seen a double-ended wrench, double wrench like this. This is in slightly rough condition, but I didn't... I, I paid... No, actually, I think I paid nothing for it. I think I, I convinced somebody to sell me this in the Christmas lights for 10 bucks. So, um, And this I bought new, but I got it from a dollar store. So three pack of steel wire. I'm going to use it to make some uh, repairs to some bells. They need, they need clappers for a dollar. That's a really good deal. That's a bargain. Um, and this collection of figures here, I got at a yard sale for two bucks. And you'll be seeing that in a video about miniatures for, um, again, miniatures on the cheap. And then we have three Ben 10 figures, which I picked up for $5 at a flea market. And I quite like them. I, I've been looking for one of the monkeys. And I really like that, that the six alum monkey. I think it's cool looking. Um, so that's, uh, um, so that'll be coming in the future. I'll probably do a video for all three at the same time. Here we have another Jokari paddle. I used two of these in my racket ball axe video. I turn, I put saw blades on them. And when I did it, someone's like, said, it looks like one of those Polynesian shark tooth clubs. And I was like, you know, it does look like a Polynesian shark tooth club. Hmm. I don't have access to shark's teeth like that, but you know, I can cut metal. We'll see what happens. Uh, we have a drywall rasp, and then we have this magnetic strip. I'll put this in the basement so I have it near where my drilling station is going to be at some point in, uh, in the future when I get a drill press, because that's my one of my next goals. Um, so I have a place to put drill bits and things like that and just screw it to the, the stud I've got down there. And then last and lot not least, this is like one of my, maybe one of my favorite finds this time around. This is a hatchet. It's double bitted. The It's actually sharp, which was quite pleasant. It is an oddly sized head. My wife looked at it and goes, what, did somebody grind the crap out of that? But no, that's what it's supposed to look like. It's really too thick, I think, to cut wood. You might be able to split kindling with this thing, but it's really, in my opinion, way too thick to actually chop wood, like a, a sapling or something. Um, but it's got a really nice weight and balance, and I like the handle shape. It's very comfortable for me because I don't have particularly large hands. And the, the snaps say Big Star, and I've never heard of the brand. I know I've seen one picture like this online. I, I um, It's an interesting construction process, and I really happen to like it. I'm, I'll be, get a video of more detail at some point. So there you go, folks. I know this is a long, long rambly video, but I found some cool stuff, and I'm quite happy with it. And get more tools for my tool bench downstairs, and more blades for new projects, chain for new projects, and maybe even this paddle for a new project someday. Cool stuff, folks. More DVDs. We have Priest, a film I've never seen, but I picked it up for a buck. I've heard it's not very good, but I thought I'd give it a watch. Here we have Gunslinger Girl, something I'd never seen before. I'm like, okay. It's like the first five or six episodes. I gotta check this out. And we have Bottle Shock, um, which has Chris Pine, Bill Pullman, and Alan Rickman in it, um, and it's a film about wine. And I'm like, could be cool. I like these. These are good actors. We have the first season of uh, series one, the original series one, Red Dwarf, uh, which is I saw a show that I really enjoyed the first few seasons of. Um, in the latter stuff, it just 
it didn't do much for me. So I got, got that for like three bucks. I'm like, that's a good price. Um, then we have the animated series of um, Spider-Man, the special edition, which is still wrapped and originally apparently cost 25 bucks. I paid three. Um, then we have Saturday Night Live, Steve Martin. My wife is a major Steve Martin fan. We have the assassination of James uh, Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. I've never seen this, and I don't know if I have seen Brad Pitt do a Western or not. I'm not positive. And we have Dylan Dog. Expect a full review of it, of this. Not positive. Then we have Terminator, uh, uh, Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles, the complete first season. Never seen these. Again, I picked it up cheap, so I thought, what the heck, I'll give it a view. Uh, we have In the Heat of the Night with Sidney Poitier and uh, Ron Steiger. Uh, I haven't watched this movie in so long, and there's a commentary track so that, that got me interested. And we have Kung Pao, which is a martial arts uh, comedy. It's, this one's called The Chosen Edition. I've never seen this. I've seen Kung Fu Hustle, which is a martial arts film with com comedic aspects. But it also really does nail some of the truths behind the philosophy of martial arts. This, I believe, is done purely as a comedy. Then we have The uh, the Good Thief with Nick Nolte. We have Eight Mile, a film I've never seen. And I think I picked it up, paid, a, paid a buck for that. And we have Intermission with Cillian Murphy and Colin Farrell, as well as Shirley Hendrickson, Kelly McDonald, and Colin Meany. My wife is a major Cillian Murphy fan. I happen to like Colin Farrell um, and, and Cole Meany. And I have never seen this. It's supposed to be a comedy or a dark comedy. So I give that a view. Then we have Errol Flynn's and Olivia de Havilland in The Adventures of Robin Hood, which is just wonderful. It is so much fun. Um, we have Sean Connery in Never Say Never Again. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a commentary track. If I ever find one with the commentary track, I'll donate this one and replace it. But I just I wanted to see this movie recently. There you go. Then we have the History Channel's Vampire Secrets. This is I got mostly for a coworker of mine. I'm probably going to look at it first, but I, I, um, I know that she'll really get a kick out of it. Then we have uh, the special edition of 12 Monkeys, which has a commentary track from the director. We have um, Alfie with Michael Caine, um, when he was just so incredibly young. <laughs> then we have... Jane Fonda and Lee Marvin in Cat Baloo, and I have not seen this film in decades. Uh, then we have Captain Kidd, um, which has a young John Carradine in it, Randall Scott, Charles Lofton. Lofton. This is just something, I, this is going to be so cool, I can't wait. I don't think I actually paid three bucks for it, I think I paid less than that. But um, you know, I found somebody that was selling a bunch of these older editions uh, of films, and I'm like, awesome. Okay, now we have a knitted wool uh, uh, doily for like pots and pans and things. It has an owl on it and it's kind of got that 70s everything in the universe was harvest gold vibe. My wife likes this vibe. I paid a buck for it. It'll decorate my wall. or We'll probably use it as a hot pad. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's cute. Though oddly, the ring to hang it if you wanted to hang it on the wall is on the bottom. So we're going to have to fix that. Um, then we have this flashlight. Now, I actually paid full price for this flashlight. Um, and there, there will be a review coming up. It's pretty bright. But it cost me a buck. This is a, 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 a baseball cap brim style flashlight that fits on the top of your hat. Which I actually think is a better place to put it because it's not in your field of view. And uh, for a dollar. I was like, you're kidding me. So for a buck, it's from uh, Ozark Trail. So for a buck, I thought I'd give it a try. And I kind of like the some of the the DVDs are coming out of DVDs. The LEDs are coming out with the square flat bulbs. I kind of like those. And we have this little hammer, which just made me think of something from like a comic book. It made me think of something like from like like you know, from a Garly Guardians of the Galaxy. But it's solid brass, um, and I liked the, the little shape here on the pommel. And I maybe it was a nut hammer or a candy hammer, but it's got a really nice feel to it. Um, and it's got some very basic uh, fruit-themed uh, scroll work on there, which makes me think that it was designed for food, um, a candy hammer or something like that for breaking up hard candy. 
But yeah, I really like, I really like that. It's quite attractive. And, and if you're the right for a 12 inch miniature, that would make an awesome hammer. Um, then we have two um, bells here. This is a cowbell that looks like an owl. So this is like some cognitive dissonance for this for this being. I mean, is it a bell that looks like a cow or a cow cowbell that looks like an owl or which is it? You know, it's kind of confusing and it's got a nice tone toward it's not vintage or anything. Um, but I think it's handmade. Um, well, I'm almost positive it's handmade, but I don't know if it's like an outsider artist or just came out of India. I'm not positive. Um, it cost me all, an all of a buck. And we have this, which is a bride and groom celebration bell. My wife has a few different celebratory bells, like New Year's, Happy Birthday, Christmas, um, things like that. I think we might have for, one for Hanukkah as well. And, and this is a Sarna out of India style bell but i picked it up at a at an estate sale for a dollar so that i can add to her collection on to the next section